Welcome back to Sunrise Family. As you know, Jamaica has been undergoing stormy weather as mm -hmm. Hurricane Beryl passes. It's always important to track the details and be in the know. So joining us are CVM news reporters Ramon Gordon and Trisha Gay Kelly. I'm surprised they're still standing <laughs> after Barely. the night they've been after the day and night they've had. Um, they'll be recapping all that took place on day one of Beryl's effects on the island. Guys, Welcome. How are you doing? Welcome. Right. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. Thank Absolutely. you for going out there to get the stories to tell our viewers. Um, is it your first hurricane as reporters? Yes. First hurricane as reporters. Yes. You never forget your first, you know. Never, <laughs> never forget your first. Right and, and, <laughs> and, and I always say, after you've done an election and you've done a hurricane, you are now officially a reporter. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Officially. What, what can you tell us? You guys were in the act, yeah. in the streets. What can you tell us about your, the effects you so saw? Tell us, where, where were you? Where did you come off mostly? I, I visited the Bogwalk Gorge first, and then I headed over to Portmore to cover. That was basically most of St. Catherine. Mm -hmm. I went through Spanish Town, too, to get a little view yeah. of it. So uh, for the Bogwalk Gorge, I was surprised that the gate wasn't already closed, seeing that we were expecting a Category 4 hurricane. Right. Uh, the residents however were not they weren't phased by it mm -hmm. they said it's a regular thing for them and if you know the gorge well you know that when you get heavy rainfall or a natural disaster they are normally flooded the water is very high and it did get high last night it covered the bridge uh, but they weren't concerned about that i think the only thing they were concerned about is wind mm -hmm. yeah blowing down trees mm -hmm. on their houses but mm -hmm. pretty much that was it for the gorge over in portmore there were a multiplicity of concerns so mm -hmm. from gullies to Helsha Beach, which was the highlight of Portmore for me. And, uh, you know, almost getting taken by a wave. <laughs> yeah. Tell us Being about risky. That. <laughs> uh, so we went there and we saw police officers leaving because I believe they were trying to get people out to evacuate the business owners as well. Yes. And uh, a few people told us they were leaving there as well. So we went down to see what was happening with the sea. The waves were already coming on land. Water was surrounding some of the businesses there. Mm -hmm. And we were taking footage. I had to do my stand up there as well. But because we want the footage and for it to look good, I have to turn my back to the sea. So I'm totally relying on my videographer to tell me <laughs> if this wave is going to cover me, yeah. you have to have my back, literally. Wow. So I'm standing there and the waves are coming. One at a time it reach uh -uh. past my uncle and come up. You know, I'm, I'm small. <laughs> my little Teletubby suit can't manage it. <laughs> and because it's a, a bit big, you know, it's easy for me to be so straight or move. Yeah, yeah. So it was... It was an experience. Uh, was yes. An experience. So I, after that, you know, of course I got out. Yes. Yeah, no reason for that. Thankfully you got out. Yeah. What about you, Ramon? I was in New Haven. I was there last year after rain scars, a similar flooding event there. Mm used to flooding there. And it's a similar mm -hmm. sentiment, Trisha yeah. Gay. The residents there, they refuse to evacuate because they're like, we're used to this. Mm. And this hurricane is not going to be any different from the rains. Right. Well, I went back there last evening. It was a completely different tone. Ooh. The neighborhood was almost empty. Some of the residents had evacuated because mm. the flood waters did in fact come in. We were expecting it. We were not surprised. But when I got there, in the dead of night, it was really devastating to see. Mm -hmm. One of the residents, he led me through the community. I spoke with some residents there, tried to get an update from the fire brigade. They were there on the ground. They couldn't brief us yet, which I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot has happened and a lot will continue to happen. We're getting reports from around the island. It's not looking great. Mm -hmm. In St. Elizabeth, in Manchester, I was on the phone with my mother mm -hmm. just before I got into studio. It's the first I've heard from my family since mm -hmm. the hurricane because I've been on the road, I've been working. Uh, they are scared but they're grateful to be alive mm. uh my friends in st elizabeth i haven't gotten any updates from them i haven't been able to reach anybody in st wow. elizabeth and i haven't been able to reach anybody in trelawney so currently we're bracing for what we're going to see when we go out today mm -hmm. because we are going back on the road i'm going back to new haven mm -hmm. trish is going where are you going trish going back to portmore she's right. going to portmore and our other colleagues we're going to go into other parts of the I island i saw some well. of our colleagues out um trying to get a, a, an idea of what's happening in the eastern part of the island yes. which tends to get things first right. um you know what was this what was the story like coming out of that space uh, i know natalia was in st thomas and to be honest she had a lot to cover because there was major flooding mm. there was roadway damage and she was literally risking her life well she risked her phone mm -hmm. thank you natalia for your service <laughs> you know what i'm curious about let me yeah. ask you ramon and, and then trisha <laughs> 
when you go out as a journalist, you know, and you're trying to capture the story, there's the story of, you know, like what's happening, but then there's also the story of the human condition. Mm -hmm. I mean, what have you learned about the Jamaican people by telling their story through this hurricane barrel? Oh, well, I've learned that Jamaicans have learned to endure a lot of trauma and mm. we deal with it in a very unique way. Mm. A hurricane is coming, it's a category four. You remember Ivan? Ivan had a similar effect and we saw the devastation it brought with mm -hmm. it. But then you see video coming out um, online with people playing football in the rain, yeah. people having parties in the rain. Jamaicans are traumatized people that have just learned to live with the trauma, you know? Mm. And that's, I think, the fundamental thing I've learned about Jamaicans. Mm. Yeah. What, what about you, Trey? Uh, Ramon said something in his story last night, and he said, we just see it as going into their community, uh, I'm not remembering, oh, really voluntarily, voluntarily. Yeah, but yeah. they have to live there. Mm. It's an experience for them that they have to endure. And when I went to Portmore, on both sides, when I went to Waterford, the gully, the people can't tackle it alone, and they were calling on their representatives to come help them. There's literally, literally a tree in the gully that fell weeks ago and it was not removed. Their power source uh -huh. can't cut it, so they needed help. And the gully water is literally worse than sewage. And it came up before and flooded their their roads and they were afraid that it would come in their house. That's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And then over in Hillshire, all of those people are about to lose their business yeah. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're scared. You mm -hmm. can understand why the beach is literally gone now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have no livelihood to go back. Right, so right. what about what about today in terms of you, you mentioned that you will be going back on the road, but what type of coverage can people expect from CVM today in terms of uh, hurricane barrel updates? We're going to paint a picture of you and let you know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. as well as to show you that the residents' fears they are coming true. Mm -hmm. They are reality today. Mm -hmm. I know the gorge is blocked. I'm not sure if it's even opened as yet, but I will be going back over to Hillshaw to see the damage. All right, so we will get that look in the recovery phase. Uh, we've gone through the pre, we've gone through the storm, and now we are coming out of it, and we will keep you informed. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Hurricane Barrel. We're keeping our eye on it for you. Our guests have been Ramon Gordon and Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News reporters. The BCIC Sunrise Insurance Lounge is up next. We'll be right back. <laughs>